Tonight, Amazon wants to be your handyman. Will Safari ditch Google? And Twitter launches offers. What are they? We will tell you. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 223 for Tuesday, November 25th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Now introducing Squarespace 7 with even better site management tools and other improvements. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Well, hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. So last week, Mozilla ditched Google for Yahoo. Ooh. Now, sources tell the information that Yahoo and Microsoft are separately pitching Apple executive Eddie Q for the Safari business, mobile Safari. Google has always been the default search engine for Apple. If you, you search in Safari now, that's, that is what the default is. But this current deal expires in early 2015, according to the information. And a switch to another partner could be based on quality of the product, but also the potential money from search ads. Now, some estimates put Apple receiving more than $1 billion per year from Google search revenue on Safari. And mobile search is obviously a big part of that. However, slowly but surely, Apple has been shifting away from Google services over the last couple of years. Think of Google Maps and YouTube getting unbundled from iOS. So this could be another nail in the coffin. Breakups happen. Reuters is reporting that China has levied just under $140 million in back taxes from, well, we think probably Microsoft. According to an article by China's Xinhua official news agency written on Sunday, an unnamed U.S. multinational must pay the Chinese government 840 million won, which is about $137 million, in back taxes and interest, as well as more than 1 million won in additional taxes a year into the future. Now, the article refers to the company with a name that starts with M, says it's one of the world's biggest 500, 500 firms, and established a wholly owned foreign subsidiary in Beijing in 1995. Now, Microsoft fits that description. In fact, it's kind of the only company that does. But the company isn't confirming reports. But it's also not denying it either. Twitter has introduced a new feature called Twitter Offers. It's kind of what it sounds like. Here's how it works. A user links their credit or their debit card to their Twitter account. Now, assuming that a user is comfortable enough to do that, then they can redeem offers from an advertiser's tweet with payment being linked to the synced card. Now, this coupon strategy is Twitter's first real foray into helping physical stores measure the impact of online promotions. And it also gives Twitter an opportunity to experiment a bit more with commerce, since the company will also make money charging advertisers to promote the tweets that contain the offers. Unsurprisingly, some retailers have already gotten on the bandwagon and have started their offers now, just in time for Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving, which is the day that a lot of people go shopping for anybody who doesn't live in the U.S. or doesn't like shopping. Amazon is introducing a new service, speaking of shopping, called Amazon Local Services in New York, Los Angeles, and Seattle, aimed at connecting customers to local service providers like plumbers or electricians or people who know how to fix broken garage doors. This is according to sources talking to the Wall Street Journal. Amazon shoppers will reportedly see the offers after purchasing items like a car stereo or an air conditioner that might require installation. Need some help. Amazon wants to help. Amazon Local Services is part of a broader Amazon effort to compete with brick and mortar stores, which still account for more than 90% of retail sales. Can you believe that? 90%. The company is also experimenting with faster deliveries and released a credit card reader earlier this year. And a little more Amazon news. Just over a week after the company debuted free same-day delivery for Prime members, some of them anyway, Amazon will now allow customers in the UK to have their orders shipped to their local post office. It's teamed up with Royal Mail to add 10,500 post office locations to its pickup location program. Amazon now has about 16,000 pickup points all over the UK. It's kind of, kind of fun. I always get everything shipped to work because I know I'm never going to be home. Post office would be helpful as well. Come to the U.S. Coming up, why Sony is cutting back on TV and mobile products and a one-key USB solution for hashtags. 
Yes, really. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform. Really, it really is an all-in-one platform that makes it so easy and fast to create a professional website or online portfolio for yourself or your business or your band or all sorts of other reasons that you might want a website. I've been using Squarespace for a long time, and Squarespace 7 is the newest version, and it makes getting started even easier. You can live edit on one screen. Uh, previously, Squarespace users used to toggle between site manager and preview mode. No, no, it's all in one place now. You can also preview designs in device mode. So you see how your site looks on tablets or mobile devices, lots of different sizes to take into consideration these days. You also get instant access to stock photography from Getty, really professional images, just $10 each, right, built right into Squarespace. And the company has also designed category-specific templates for different industries. I mentioned musicians, but what about architects or, or people who work in the food industry, chefs, uh, you know, something, you're just wanting to show off your work. You have a lot of templates to choose from. E-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels, including the ability to accept donations. So you can sell stuff, and you can take donations all in one place. And plans start at just $8 a month. That includes a free domain name if you sign up for an entire year and you want to, because it's fun. Squarespace portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps all help you stay on the go with a with a line into your website so that you can monitor everything and make changes from anywhere. Note and blog apps are also on Android as well. Squarespace loves Android as well as iOS and hosting is included. Squarespace host your site and you don't have to worry about it. I hate having to deal with that. You know, just do it in one place. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required. Free for two weeks to start building your new website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT and you will get 10% off. And to begin using Squarespace 7, existing customers, go to the settings tab and activate all these new features. Great templates too. Thanks to Squarespace for the support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits and it starts with your new Squarespace website. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Apple's market cap is now hovering around $700 billion. Huh. However, leave it to IDC to ruin the party just a little bit. Its analyst report today says that full-year iPad shipments will decline for the first time in history due to a sluggish market overall for tablets. Now, Apple offers more models of its iPad than it ever has before. It will ship 64.9 million iPad tablets in 2014. That's a decline of 12.7% on the total number of shipments just a year ago. The bigger tablet market will see shipments of 235.7 million units. That's a growth of 7.2% over 2013. To compare, tablet shipments between 2012 and 2013 grew 52.5%. So definite slowing of the tablet market overall. Sony's trimming its TV and mobile phone lineup to cut some costs and instead focus on what works, the multi-billion dollar revenue coming in from the PlayStation 4 and image sensor businesses over the next three years. Hiroki Totoki, Sony's new chief of the mobile division, said at an investor's conference, quote, we're not aiming for size or market share, but better profits. Isn't that what everybody's aiming for? The Xperia smartphone business hasn't really been a success for Sony, but the company is planning to boost sales in its video game division to as much as $13.6 billion. The company also hopes to grow its image sensors business used by Apple and others by 70%. Oh, and Sony also says that it's aiming to lift its movie and TV programming revenues by a third over the next three years. So, you know, no pressure. Okay, question for you. How many people in the entire world currently have internet access? Just over 3 billion people, according to the United Nations International Telecommunications Union, or ITU for short. I mean, that's not so bad, considering the total world population today is around 7.2 billion people, right? So under half, but getting almost there. In 2014, global internet usage grew 6.6%, with developed countries seeing a 8.7% growth in internet usage, and developing nations seeing 3.3% growth. The research also shows that the number of internet users in developing countries having doubled in the last five years, and two-thirds of all people online now living in the developing world. All this said, there are still more than 4.3 billion people not yet online, 90% of whom live in developing countries. Has anybody told Facebook about this? Just kidding. Okay, finally, let me ask you one more thing. Are you tired of using two keys 
for all of that nonsensical hashtagging that you overdo on Twitter. So what I mean is on a regular keyboard, you have to hit shift then you have to hit three and then you get the pound sign, right? That's very time consuming. It should be easier. Well, a Kickstarter project wants really, really badly to save you some time. It's called the hash key. And it's just, it's just a single little key that connects to your computer via USB and makes your life so much easier. Yes, we're running out of ideas. Hashtag dumb. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss Tech News today. That is our morning news program. It starts at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can watch both. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.